Alright, hi, this is uh, Professor Collins, and we will be going over some data cleaning today. Um, so, hey there, uh, data cleaning team. Um, let's do some data cleaning. So, uh, there's several things that I'm going to be going over today. Um, one is just sort of some, some normative uh, stuff about data cleaning. Um, and then two um, is going to be going over specifically creating variable labels um, or, or changing the variable labels or value labels, I should say, into something that makes more conceptual sense. All right, so before doing anything, and, and this is a general note, um, what I would highly recommend is that anytime one of you changes a document to save it as. All right, so um, save under a new file. That way, if we mess something up, we can just go back to the previous version, and we don't have to start from the beginning. Um, so the way I typically do that is I'll go to File, Save As, and um, I'll put the last date of the day, um, or, or the day that I'm working on it, right? So today, today's um, uh, 2015, uh, November, and the date is the 3rd. Um, another thing you can do is add versions, version 1, version 2, so on and so forth. So I'm going to go version 1 in case you're doing multiple edits in the same day. So I'm going to save this as a new file. And what I want to start by doing is we have all of this information here, and it's way too much information for data analysis. We'll use this for the report, and we'll use this for the presentation, um, but all of this stuff is, is just it's too much information for data analysis. Um, so a couple things real quick, have your data set open and then also have the survey open right next to you so you can um, reference that when you need it. Um, so what I would do here is I would create a new, um, a new file, or not a new file, a new row. And so all of the numerical values here are the rows, all of the um, alpha values here or the um, the text values here are the columns. So you can do this in a number of ways. Um, for ease, I'm just going to start off with V1 and have it turn into um, all of the different variables. Right. So this V1 is going to represent V1 through V105 is going to represent each of our variables. And we can then delete these. But before we do that, um, we need to start creating a code book. Um, so let's change the name of our data sheet here and just call this data. Um, and so you can do this like I did this, or you can break it up into sections, right? So if we go back to our survey here, we can call maybe these the first two variables um, A1 and A2, and then start with 3, this would be B, for example, number 4 would be C, something like that, right? It, can, it all depends on how you guys want to do it. Um, there's no right or wrong way to name your variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of our variables, um, the, the top three rows, and I'm going to press Control C here, then I'm going to open and create a new worksheet, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to push on this little button here called Transpose, and that'll move our data this way. So it's just a little bit easier to read here. Um, so our data is a little bit long, so what I'm going to do here is shrink it up a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Highlight this, wrap the text. All right, so as you can see, V11 represents this variable here. V12 represents this. And this is what I'm talking about. It's sort of easier to see what the variables represent. So instead of V14, we might want to call this C1 through um, C6, for example. Right? Again, it's up to you of what you want to do. So let's rename this uh, variable uh, labels. Okay. So we have our variable labels and we have our data. So now we can go back here and we can delete these top two rows. All right, so now let's start with creating values, creating numeric values for each of these text values. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to start by inserting a new column. And as you can see in the format here, it's going to be text. 
what we want to do every time we do this, it's probably going to happen every single time. So we want to change this to general. If it's text, it will not read our formulas. And that is not good. All right. So we're going to call this v14 because it's going to replace it. And what we're going to want to do here is now we're going to want to create a... Actually, I'm going to do this on a different variable because this only has me and blank. So I'm going to do this on this variable here. This has yes and no, right? Um, so what I want to do here is, again, insert general v10. And so we have yeses and nos. And so we want to create a new tab, and we're going to rename this value labels. And what we want to do is we want to start putting our values under um, under our value label section, right? And one thing we can do here is we can this can help us actually be our code book, right? Um, so we could do something like variables. Um, we can create new columns, and we can call this um, response options and numerical values, right? And so under variables, if we go back here, we know v10, so variable v10, call this v10, it's going to have yes, and we have to make sure it's spelled the exact same way with the exact same capitals, right? So we might actually be better off by copying this, going back and pasting it, and then do the same thing for no. So we have a no here, copy this, go back, paste it, and say we want one to represent yes, two to represent no, all right? And that's going to be for variable v10. If we have any other variables that this particular response option works for, then we can go ahead and add these, right? Say it's variable v67, we can add those, right? So that way we know this is sort of our code book, right? We know which response options or how our responses are for um, each of those variables. So we'll go back and we can start entering our code. Right, so we have our variable v10, it's general, so now we can start entering our code. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of what's called vlookup as well as an if statement. Right, so the if statement will help us if we have any blanks, the vlookup will um, help us recode our, var our variables. So we're going to go um, equal sign if, close the parentheses, so if j2 is not equal to, so what we're going to do for that is a less than sign and a greater than sign, or vice versa, whatever you want to call it. Um, so if it's not equal to blank, then we want to insert our, so uh, if it's not equal to blank, so I put two quotations for blank, then I'm going to do a comma and I'm going to add in the vlookup function. And so we're going to look up value J2, and then we're going to go to the table array. So we're going to do comma and go over to our value labels, and we're going to select our table array here. And after we do that, we want to press F4, right? And then add another column, and then we're going to put the number 2 because it's in the second column, right? So our column index number is the second. Um, and then we're going to put another comma, lookup range, we're going to leave that blank, close the parentheses, and press another comma, now, now we're back to the if statement, and two quotation marks again, and close the parentheses there, and we should have our one. All right? So that was a lot going on, and I understand that. So um, let me, I will highlight this so you can sort of look up, um, you can look at the, the formula that I used, all right? So that way you can sort of see that, what I did there. And now you can see that the two is a no, the ones are all yeses, and that's what they're representing. So now what we want to do is highlight the whole column. Actually, we're going to leave this as is for now. Let's, let's leave that alone.
Um, what we'll eventually want to do is, uh, well, I'll go, I'll go back and show you, but what we'll eventually want to do is save these as values instead of formulas, and then delete that row, or this column, rather. Okay? So now let's, let's, um, Let's, take it, let's copy this formula because this will help us out, right? So let's copy this formula and go down to something else that's a little less clear. So let's insert here and let's copy our formula, all right? So now we have V41 and we forgot to change this to general. And it's still this. So if it, if this happens to you, click in here, double click in here, and then um, enter, and it'll it'll undo it. Um, so we have different values here: state about the same, increase somewhat, so on and so forth, right? So we're gonna have to create a new thing in our value labels. And the nice thing about this is is you'll be able to use the same formula for many of these variables. Um, so let's go over to our data or our, our survey and let's go find that variable. Obviously it doesn't say V41 on here so let's go to our variable labels and we're looking for the question that says has your household's debt changed over the past year? Alright so let's go scroll down has your household's debt changed over the past year? So here we go. And the cool thing about this is we can actually copy directly from PDF and go to our value labels and we will paste that right there. Pretty nice, huh? And so under our variables, we're going to go V41 and our numerical values. And so let's think conceptually about this. We have increased a great deal, increased somewhat, so and then all the way down to decreased a great deal. So instead of doing 1 through 5, we might actually be better off doing 5 through 1, where 5 indicates an increase and 1 indicates a decrease. Another option, actually, uh, and this is up to you as the team, is you can do a, let's say, a 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, right? That's another option. Totally up to you guys, right? So negatives indicate a decrease, whereas positives indicate an increase. Again, it's up to you, right? Um, you could also just do 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or you can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up to you again. So let's go back to our data, and we have our um, formula here. So now let's start entering the information that we need. So we need a, uh, AP2. We need AP2 here again. And now we need to actually change this function here. So we're going to delete this, and we're going to go to our value labels, select our table, um, press F4, and press enter, and we're good to go. All right, so now you can see that this formula um, leaves anything blank that's blank, which we need to do, and anything that's increased a great deal is 2, anything that's decreased somewhat is negative 1, and state about the same is 0. Right. So the nice thing about this is we can use the same thing for anything that's that's here, right? So V43, for example, call this V43, can use the exact same table, right? So let's let's do the same thing here. Let's insert. We'll call this V43. We'll go back and we'll steal our formula and we'll plug it in here. And the nice thing is, it moves it over with it, right? So we have the exact same information, copy and paste, we are good to go, right? Um, so one last note on this, um, and so just basically do this all the way down the line. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to email me. So um, one last note on this, what we want to do is we want to highlight, another way to do this actually is just highlighting, um, we'll copy. And then we want to paste special, um, and we actually want to just paste the values. So now this isn't a formula anymore, but you want to keep the formula somewhere so you can you can continually use it. Delete that. Now we have values, right? Um, we have our V41. 
We're going to want to copy, paste values, delete. So now this is values, right, instead of um, numerical text. All right, so you guys have, a, have quite a bit of work ahead of you, um, but this shouldn't take extremely long given the formulas that we'll be using. Um, I'll, I'll, let me give you one more quick um, piece of information here. So V47, what is that? So if we're looking at V47 contacted by a collection agency, there's only one option there. So let's do something easy on this one. So V47, right? We don't have to do the long formula. Let's create one here. Um, so what we'll want to do here is an if statement. So if we have, so if this cell has no values, we're going to leave it blank. If it actually, we're going we're gonna to label it zero. If it has any values, we're going to label it 1. All right? Yep, I went backwards on that. So if it's blank, or if it's, excuse me, if it's, we'll do equal sign. If it's blank, no values. If it's not blank, one value, right? And now we have 1s and zeros. So that so then now we can use that all the way down the line for any of these variables that are basically yes, no type of variables, right? Where we have contacted or blank, right? Um, good. Okay. So again, any questions, let me know, and uh, we'll get you guys moving on this.